the valley of the Barrich River. A vast patchwork of forest, ponds, meadow and wetlands. It's a land of very high biological diversity. It is a kingdom of birds. There are nearly 300 species of birds in the area. The natural treasures of the valley were developed by man and nature working together. Since medieval times, its system of fish ponds has become the biggest complex in Europe. Its unique natural values means that the Barrich Valley is now protected as part of the European network of Natura 2000. Rhythms of nature in the Barrich Valley. It is the end of February. The whole valley is still asleep, covered with a thick layer of snow. Even though the ponds are still frozen, flocks of wild geese have arrived from the warmer parts of Europe where they have spent the winter. Some geese stayed in the valley, but the appearance of thousands more heralds the arrival of spring. For the bean and white-fronted geese, the Barrich Valley is an important stop in their migration towards their breeding sites in the far north. The sun is slowly chasing away the dark clouds of winter. It is gradually getting warmer. The ice is breaking up. On the first little patches of open water, flocks of mallards that have recently returned from their wintering grounds feed intensively. Any sheet of open water is a magnet, drawing in more and more birds. The biggest noise comes from the hooper swans. Compared to the well-known mute swans, these can be extremely noisy. Sunny weather is good for preening. All birds can make a pretty stylish performance out of it. The thaw has started for good. As soon as the temperatures regularly rise above freezing, the snow and ice make a quick disappearance from the Barrich Valley landscape. After the long months of winter, it's the snowdrop that's the first flower to bloom. Their delicate white calyxes stir thoughts of spring full of colourful flowers. Hazel blossom is the symbol of early spring. The warm sun makes the male blossom swell. The air is full of the pollen grains that will fertilize the female flowers to produce the autumn crop of hazelnuts.
in a secluded marsh in the middle of the forest, a couple of cranes have appeared. For several years in a row, these birds have been nesting in the neighbouring reed bed. So they feel quite at home here now. But there's another pair of cranes who have also set their eyes on this place. The male warily enters the reed bed, not knowing if it is occupied territory. The resident pair soon see him off with their loud call. The newcomer is not at all impressed. Confrontation is unavoidable. The intruder was finally chased away. The next morning, there's a fleeting return of winter. This often happens in early spring. The cranes must peck through the snow to find food. They keep a good lookout all the time. They've got sharp eyesight, so they can see the male that they fought off the day before. It was time to start mating. After they've copulated, the birds perform their ritual dance. In early April, in the shallowest parts of the ponds, you can spot blue frogs. These are the male moor frogs. They turn blue for just a week, which is their mating time. The males arrive at the pond before the females. They wait for the females to arrive, and they make their mating calls. and move around a lot. Looking about them for a potential mate. All at once they rush towards a female. However, it is easy to make a mistake. This time, it was a toad, not a female moorfrog. The springtime forest is full of the characteristic sound of drumming, the special territorial and mating call of the woodpecker. The black woodpecker the biggest of the European woodpeckers has started to mate. One of the first spring songbirds is the tiny wren. It's just half the size of a sparrow. The warmth of the sun wakes the plants from their winter sleep.
In no time at all, the landscape is covered with fresh green growth. In the bushes above the pond, the penduline tit builds its unusual nest. Only the male builds this elaborate confection using plant fibre and willow fluff. It may take him three weeks to finish. Then he tries to attract a partner into his new desirable residence. Cranes, for their safety, build their nests somewhere that's surrounded by water. The best site in this couple's territory was near the reed bed. At the end of April, after 30 days of brooding, the young cranes hatch. Young cranes leave the nest very soon after they've hatched. One of the parents took the older chick out into the meadow, although it was just 12 hours old. The second parent stayed in the nest until the other egg hatched, two days later. It is very energetic. It tries to explore the neighborhood, even though it can only make clumsy movements. But it can't climb back onto the nest, and it needs help. Soon it will leave the nest, and accompanied by its mother, it will join the rest of the family. Alongside the rivers and streams of the Barrich Valley, there lives a real jewel, the kingfisher. When it hangs in the air, it looks like a hummingbird. Its daily food is small fish which it hunts with great skill. But no matter how good a fisherman it is, one day the kingfisher may drop the catch. Just like human anglers, the kingfishers know the good fishing spots and will fight to fish there. Hitting the spiny stickleback against a branch, the kingfisher knocks it out and then strips off the spikes. This little bird can catch and eat ten small fish in a day. The meadows are at their most beautiful in May. The grass is never more lush than it is in early summer. But it is the richness of flowers that makes the meadows so captivating. There's an extraordinary range of colours and shapes and smells. Wandering through the meadow in May is to walk through the most magical of gardens. The splendour of the wildflower display, the colours of the ragged robins, the globe flowers and the sages not only brings joy to our eyes, but it is a signal that brings in the insects looking for food. The beauty of the flower display is short-lived. When the petals fall, then the flowering carpet will be just a memory. It's a warm June morning. On a shallow pond, the whiskered terns settle in a colony. Their harsh calls can be heard from far away. They build their nests on the tufts of sedge that stick out of the water. Nearby them, a dozen black-neck grebes have also built their nests. The aggressive and noisy terns offer them some protection and warn them of incoming danger. However, the neighbourly feelings between these birds are not always ideal. That's why the grebe waits for the moment when the irritating terns are not around and only then enters its nest. The 
Grebe is always very wary and gives his surroundings a cautious inspection. On the same pond, the Dabchick, the smallest of all the Grebes, broods its eggs. Four of the six eggs have hatched already. The young are happy to sit on their parents' back, nestled amongst the feathers. They eat small fish and insects. When the prey is too large, the young need a long time before they can manage to swallow it. Young dab chicks can swim and even dive in the first hours of their lives. Poppies and cornflowers add some color to the cornfields. These beautiful flowers, which humans treat as weeds, are slowly disappearing from our landscape. And yet it is very hard to imagine Polish scenery without these captivating flowers. There are lots of other birds besides cranes breeding in the reed beds. These immense and hard to reach areas offer them a safe place to raise a family. Young bearded tits wait amongst the dried stems of last year's reeds for the return of their parents. The adults have to keep up a constant toing and froing, hopping about the water's edge if they are to feed five ever hungry young. These birds are rare breeders in Poland. They feed on small insects that they catch just above the surface of the water. The male has a black, moustache-like streaks on the side of its head. That's where its name comes from. Just next door, in an even smaller nest, the female reed warbler incubates its four eggs. One of the brood is starting to hatch. However, it is not the young reed warbler. Two weeks ago, a female cuckoo, unseen by the reed warbler, dropped her egg into this nest. Now the young cuckoo hatches. As the first of the brood, the reed warbler did not notice the trick and now feeds the young as if it were its own. The young cuckoo needs to throw the other eggs out of the nest. If it doesn't do this, then the parents will not be able to feed all the nestlings. But the first attempts are not successful. The cuckoo is still too weak. It tries again. It must push the egg above the edge of the nest. It is a big effort. The determination of the weak cuckoo nestling to get rid of the competition is amazing to see. After a few hours, it has another go. This time, there's some success. The first egg landed in the water. When it throws out the second egg, the cuckoo almost follows it out of the nest itself. Now, for the last one. Alone at last. The ever open, bright red beak and the constant peeping from the cuckoo prompts the reed warblers to bring it food without a break. Now all the insects and spiders end up in its beak. 
With such intensive feeding, the young cuckoo reaches its adult size in just two weeks. It is so large that when it sits on the nest, it must hold tight so it doesn't fall off. In a strong wind, the nest may even break apart under its weight. Although the cuckoo is by now much bigger than the reed warblers, they still treat it as if it's one of their own nestlings. Even after it has left the nest, they will still feed it. At the end of August, the young cuckoo will start its lonely journey to Africa. It will return next spring, maybe even to the same reed bed, and try to toss an egg into a reed warbler's nest. By the ponds where the fish have been harvested, the ubiquitous carrion crow scours the shoreline for leftovers. It will start its feast on the very softest parts, the abdomen. There's another bird who wants to take advantage of the easy pickings, the white-tailed eagle. With a massive broad wingspan reaching two and a half meters, it is the mightiest bird of prey in Northern Europe. Its keen eyesight, eight times better than a human's, allows it to easily spot the feeding crow and the washed up fish. One feasting eagle is a sign for others that the place is safe and that they can eat here in peace. These raptors have to live around large bodies of water where they can fish and hunt for birds. Their short white tailed feathers and the huge yellow bill are very distinctive. These birds can even live for 40 years. Big expanses of reed bed make a great habitat for wild boar. The sow has found a safe hiding place for her young. It is the height of summer. On a hot afternoon, there's a nice freshness by the water. On one of the tributaries of the barrage, a damselfly lands on the water maze. Don't be deceived by their apparent daintiness. These slight creatures are actually excellent predators, hunting for small insects. On one of the ponds, in dense reed, the smallest of our herons, the little bittern, has hidden its nest. They are very mysterious and secretive birds. The young have just woken up from their afternoon nap, and now they must wait for their parents to come back with food. The stagnant waters of the reed bed make a fine breeding ground for mosquitoes. They constantly tease the chicks, attacking the least feathered bits of their bodies near their eyes and beaks. The young bitterns try to get rid of the intruders, but they can't cope. There are just too many mosquitoes. There's a long drawn out wait for the parents to come back with food. Young birds are already very hungry. Finally, the male appears. He's very wary. He looks around the neighborhood of the nest. Only when he sees that there is no danger does he go to the chicks. The youngest immediately attacks his father's beak. He wants the food that's in the crop. And he's not the only one who is hungry. All the young rush forward as soon as the frog is regurgitated. They fight with all their might. And finally, the oldest one wins. The youngest and smallest of the chicks is still hungry.
It is persistent. It demands food. Finally, it can eat. With difficulty, it swallows the frog, which is only just smaller than itself. After such a hearty meal, it's time for a nap. The young cuddle up with their father, who's sitting in the nest like a farmyard hen. Near the end of the summer, the air is full of insects. Meadows are covered with cobwebs that glisten in the late sunshine. In the sandy areas, the reed beds become golden. The mornings are becoming cooler, and floating over the meadows is the first fog of autumn. It's the beginning of the rut, the red deer mating. From many places there comes the roar of the lonely stags, showing off their strength, trying to attract the hinds. The characteristic smell of musk hangs in the air. The stags tear out the grass and hit the branches with their antlers, releasing aggression and marking their territory. Stags try to gather around themselves the largest harem possible. This stag is trying to hold together a large group of hinds and their offspring. He has to make sure that none of them drift away from the herd even for a moment. During this time, the stag eats next to nothing. He will lose about a quarter of his weight. The hinds, on the other hand, are eating a lot of grass and saplings. Sometimes there's a harmless skirmish, like this one between a hind and a young stag. As autumn continues, a lot more birds will arrive at the ponds. All over the whole Barrage Valley area, there may be several tens of thousands of gulls, ducks, geese and herons. The birds are here for food and rest before they move to warmer countries. The Millich Ponds Nature Reserve offers them peace and quiet. Black-headed gulls and great egrets come here en masse, looking for small fish that have been left by the fishermen. The most beautiful spectacle is the evening gathering of cranes. In autumn, small family groups join together into large flocks. They come back from the feeding grounds to the ponds, where they will spend the night. There may be several thousand birds in one place. The chance to see such a large number of cranes is a unique experience. It is already after nightfall when the last V-shaped formation lands. They have traveled a dozen or more kilometers from the feeding ground In shallow water, cranes feel safe. Throughout the night, you hear their voices.
Early morning comes. Birds delay their departure until the fog has settled. Fights among this year's young break out. Sometimes the parents buy into the quarrel, standing up for their children. During this season, white-tailed eagles come to the ponds in large numbers. The young, inexperienced bird of prey tries to catch a crane. Very quickly, it learns that this is not a good idea. The sun rises higher and higher. The cranes get ready to fly away. At last, they soar into the air. Autumn arrives for good in the Barrich Valley. The trees get ready for the coming of winter. Oaks, maples and birches reveal to us a beauty that's been hidden up to now. However, the life of the colourful decorations is short. Clouds moving quickly across the sky announce a change in the weather. The next day, the wind blows stronger. The leaves fall off the branches. The leaves of the red oak are heavy and make a thick rustling carpet. Many of them fall into the pond and gather at the banks as a floating carpet. Each day the colours of autumn fade. Leaves fall from the trees. Ice coats the surface of the pond and snow covers the last traces of autumn. There is no roar of deer, no call of cranes or rustling of leaves in the wind to be heard. For all animals, there started a difficult season of cold weather and shortages of food. Sounds are dampened by the monotonously falling snowflakes. A silent and fluffy winter has arrived at the Barrage Valley. Nature will stay asleep for many long months until in early spring the bustle of birds heralds a revival.